Hi, my name is Kirsten Binet, and my project was over gene expression profiling of the urease operon of a lactobacillus strain isolated from the prairie vole gastrointestinal tract. So a little bit of background about urease. Um, this is an enzyme that hydrolyzes urea to produce ammonia and carbon dioxide. Microbial urease has multiple roles in microbial physiology and human health. However, it has been known to be a virulence factor for several different pathogens. Um, these pathogens are able to sense the environment they're exposed to, and if they need to, they can upregulate this uh, an enzyme and um, neutralize its surrounding microenvironment um, to survive. And this obviously is essential for colonization and maintenance of bacterial cells in a host organism. And on the right, I provided a little picture of a urease test. So when ammonia is produced, it raises the pH, and this causes a pink positive result. Uh, using whole genome sequencing, we have identified a putative urease operon in the prairie vole lactobacillus strain PV034, and this has nine genes total. And for our project specifically, our goal was to study the operon's gene regulation under acidic conditions. To the right, I have a diagram that shows these genes um, in a proposed pathway. Um, urea I brings in the urea, and urea ABC are the subunits, and as it goes through its pathway, accessory genes get added each way through, and then it produces ammonia at the end. So for our methods, um, basically we took um, lactobacillus strains and plated them on MRS plates, which is protocol usually for lactobacillus. And once we did this, we cultured them in the treated media. Um, we either did this at pH 2, 4, 6, which is the control, and 8, and also with or without the presence of 1% urea. This was incubated at 37 degrees for 30 minutes and then harvested for RNA isolation. Once um, RNA was isolated, we used this to generate cDNA for our reverse transcriptase um, quantitative PCR reactions. That we used uh, CyberGreen MasterMix and data analysis uh, we used by GraphPad Prism 9, and we did a 2A ANOVA with two, two keys, multiple comparisons post hoc tests. Here's another diagram of the operon in its order. So it starts out with the urea channel, urea I, and then it has the subunit genes, and then it has the accessory proteins, um, E, F, G, and D. So for the results, I broke it down into each pH. Um, with their addition of urea compared to the pH 6 control. So for pH 2, there was no significant increase when pH 2 uh, was alone compared to pH 6. However, once urea was added, there was an increase in all genes when compared to pH 2 alone. For pH 4, uh, there was an increase in both pH 4 alone and when urea was added compared to the control. However, um, these two together, there is no increase when urea was added, except for the last genes, urea G and D. Interestingly, for pH 6, there was no significant difference between any of the genes in the operon. For pH 8, we had similar results as we did in pH 2. Um, the only increase we saw was when urea was added, except for the gene urea E, where there was no difference. So in conclusion, uh, a very low pH, such as pH 2, will not upregulate genes alone. Um, however, when urea is added, it will do that. And at pH 4, genes in the urease operon will upregulate with and without the addition of urea. And this pH had the highest gene expression overall. Um, there was no significant difference between pH 6 and pH 6 with 1% urea. And this is probably due to um, needing a higher concentration of urea. And finally, upregulation of all the genes of the urease operon, except for gene urea E at pH 8 will only occur in the presence of urea, so very similar um, results with pH 2. So insight into this gene regulation of the urease operon could be crucial to understanding pathogens in the mammalian gastrointestinal tract. Future studies could be directed to um, characterization of the in vivo role of urease production. An additional study could also be done at higher concentration of urea and at pH 3 could also be performed. Finally, I'd like to thank Dr. Kohler, Dr. Sifa, Dr. Curtis, and Haley Gaines for helping me with my project. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me at kirsten.bene at okstate.edu. Thank you.